Hi, good evening. First of all, I want to say that most of the friends here ask me, where are you from? And I really don't find the answer. And I will answer by small poem for small words from Mahmoud Darwish said that I am from there. I am from here. But I'm not there and not here. I have two names which meet and part. I have two languages and I don't know which one of them I dream in. I was born in 1976. I was born in Jerusalem for two Palestinian parents. I grew up first years in Jerusalem. Life seemed innocent and normal, climbing trees, running with friends in the streets. I had no knowledge about Arab-Israeli conflict at all. But from time to time, I would hear about something scary called Jewish, Yahud. My first encounter with Jewish, it was when I was 10 years old. I was in my home in Jericho, on my way to school, riding my bike. Some students was throwing stones on the passing cars on Amman Street, which is very close to my school. I cross a big jeep army with three soldiers. One of them who motioned to me to stop. And he came out of his jeep. And he asked me to give, to give him my bag. My bag. I, I did. I just left the bag and go back. He opened my bag and dropped all the things on the floor. And check. And he went. I collect my things and I continue to school. When I go back home, I find my grandmother, she's original from Lifta, in, my home, in our home in Jericho. And I asked her, who's these soldiers? Why they came here? What they need from us? She said, this is Jewish. They came here to take our homes, our lands, to kick us out from here. And I wondering, I asked her why they don't have their own homes, they don't have their own lands. She said they had, but they like to take Arab homes and give it to them friends. I start to wondering why Jewish want to take our homes and our lands. This was my first knowledge about Jewish. This time, the first intifada start. And we was facing soldiers every time when we went to school. When we went to school, every day we going out from our school, running to home. We run from the tear gas and the bullets and all these things. I start to refuse to go to school against my father's orders to go to school. I just went and went and go back. The situation, I didn't go to school more than 10 days. After this, we heard that soldiers closed the school. And I feel very happy to close it because I don't want to go anymore. I feel safe as much as I don't go out. But at the same time, some Palestinians actives, they was doing demonstrations in the night. They would block streets by stones and and making fire around the homes, between the homes, around the home, between the homes. Soldiers come, they start to shoot in them. I would hear the, sh the, the bullets from my bed. One of these nights, somebody knocked bang our door. He knocked more and more and more until my father opened the home, uh, opened the door to him. He entered, I was sleeping. I felt somebody pull my cover off of me. I opened my eyes. He was soldier with a big hat on his head and gun between his hands. I really froze in my place. It was absolute terror. Minutes later, my mother come to, to the room. 
She was crying, she hugged us, and she told us that they took my father. We wait until the morning. My father came back, he was dirty. He told us that army let them clean the junction and sweep the streets, and some of them was being hated by buttons. This situation stay a long time, and there is too many stories to retell from that time. I lived under the curfew more than 10 days with a few food. I saw homes in my neighborhood was demolished because some of these families was active in the first intifada. I saw people hate by buttons in front of me. This situation passed until 1990, the Gulf War. We heard Saddam Hussein will kill all Jewish and he will make Palestine free. I really was happy to hear that and excited. I was running, when I hear Serena, I was running to the roof to see the missiles came from Baghdad and aimed Tel Aviv. I was excited when I hear the explosion and see the light come from that side. But at the same time, when I went down and watched the TV, I saw all the women injured and crying, and kids. And I asked, who's these people? Is the Jewish have mothers? They have kids, they have wives and families? I didn't think so. I think, but I thought that Jewish is just the army, just the occupation army, That's, this is the Jewish. After this war, I decide to be one of the Palestinian fighters in the first intifada. I was 15 years old. I start to throw stones and make a graffiti in walls against Israel and put some flags on the on the electricity cables. Some of my friends was arrested. Eventually, I was too. When I went out from jail, we start to hear about peace process. Arafat and Ishaq Rabin, they try to make peace process between Palestinians and Israelis. We start to demonstrate support the peace process. We was going to streets, just no one word, two or two words in English. We want peace. This is the whole demonstration. 1994, we was waiting the Palestinian Authority to enter to Jericho, and they, they didn't enter for more than 10 days. We feel disappointed, and we feel they will not come. One of these nights, I went home very late, and I came back to the square to see what, what's happening. And I saw soldiers between amount of people, and it wasn't normal to see soldiers outside, between this amount of people, I came close. He was with different uniform and a Palestinian flag on his shoulder. I feel very happy. I feel that we got our freedom. We will not suffer anymore. We will not scare anymore. And I decided to enlist in the, in the Palestinian army because I wanted to have gun. I wanted to have the power. I want to protect my family and myself and my kids in the future with this gun. I worked in the police force as a detective for some years. Situation was very good until 1996. Small uprising start when, when Israel opened channel under Aqsa Mosque. The people start to protest against this channel. We got order from our officers to go to save Elisha settlement, which is very close to Jericho. Don't let the protesters go to there and throw stones in it. I took a group of my friends, the police, and I went there, and we st in the way, I bombed with one of my friends, his name is Firas. 
he was with me in the high school and he studied law in Jordan. And I asked him, why you are here? He said, I'm on vacation. And then I told him, so why are you going to, why are you going to with these people? He said, I want to participate. I told him, just go and focus to your university, your education, and forget these crazy things. It will not help. He smiled and he went. I know that he gonna participate and throw stones because we were doing it together in the past. I went to there, I arrived the main gate of the settlement and I start to push the Palestinians back. Two jeeps from the back side arrived, they took cover, they took positions, the Palestinians start to throw stones, they throw stones. The army responds by shooting. We stuck the bullies. We stuck on the middle. One of my friends, the bullies, he was shooting his leg. I crawled on the floor and I hide behind the big rock. I was hearing the bullets from the back hit this rock, which I hide behind it. This time I saw Firas, the same guy. He's my close friend. I saw him running in front of me. I asked him to stop and come to hide with me. He, he turned and he started to move to my direction. Two or three steps and he fell down. He was shooted by fire gun. He was laying on his back and looking at me. I tried to go, I tried to crawl to bring him, but I didn't succeed. Even the ambulance team, they tried to, to take Firas, they been shot too. One of them was Ahmed, he's my friend and my partner in Palestine now. He was shot when he was working in the ambulance team. I was looking all the time to Firas to, to be sure he's still alive or not. I tried too many times to, to arrive to Firas, but I didn't succeed. Eventually the ambulance took him. I stand up. I didn't know what's happened. I stand up and I start to walk between bullets and gas and fire, I didn't feel anything. The only thing I feel that I wake up in the hospital, I was injured too, but not very serious injured. I wake up and I went out from the hospitals. I against the doctor orders to see what's happened to Faraz. I saw his, mo his mother on the, on the corridor of the hospital. She was crying. And she told me that Firas passed away. I blamed myself why I didn't shoot these soldiers. I blamed myself why I didn't save Firas. Ten days I didn't go out until this uprising finished. I went back to my work and I decided to don't work in the police anymore and to drop the gun away because this gun didn't bring anything, just pain and pain and suffering. All the weapons, I start to understand that weapons bring suffering, not, not secure. Days passed. I start to work in internet cafe, 2000 second intifada starts. I didn't join this intifada. I didn't try to be active in this intifada. 2004, special commandos team entered to this internet cafe. One of the customers was wanted as they said, and they start to shoot. Three people was shooted. One of them did at the same time. 
His name is Amr. And I was arrested for five, six hours. And they sent me, they let me go. Here I start to think how I can return the pain to these people. How I can let them suffer like what they did to me. I start to think to do something big, not just to shoot whatever soldier somewhere, no, something bigger than this. But what happened to me was 100% opposite. When I meet one of my friends who was shooted near the settlement, Ahmad, and he took me with him to Bethlehem. Suddenly in the evening he told me, he gonna go to meeting with a group from Jewish and Palestinians called Wounded Crossing Borders. I refused to go with him. I said, are you believe that Israelis believe in peace? They even killed Ishaq Rabin, the prime minister, because he, dis he tried to make peace. How you believe this? He said, if you don't want to sit with them, you can stay on the restaurant downstairs. I said, okay. For unknown reasons, I found myself in the meeting. They was talking about Gaza war. In the beginning, Jews start to justify them actives in Gaza, killing people and these things. And it seemed normal for me. I didn't talk. I said, it's okay. They always try to find excuses to kill Palestinians. But I really struck when one of this group, she's a lady, she stand up and she said, we have to strike for these rocks which fall in Israel, but we always doing this by iron fist. More, we do it very big, we do it very strong, and we don't have to do this. I just felt I want to hug her, and I ask her to stand up, and I really hug her. This meeting lead to other meetings. I start, I don't want to make it longer, I start to meet other Israelis. And I start to understand them. I start to understand them fears and them suffering. I visit Yad Vashem with them. And I saw too many movies talking about Holocaust and refugees who came from Arab countries. I start to understand Jewish, but I didn't forget what happened to me. But I start to forgive, not to forget what happened to me. One of these nice people who I meet in these groups is Daphna and she's she's my guest here and she's my second mother she's my Jewish mother and I'm proud to say that eventually through these meetings we decide with our friends to make something, to change something on the ground, not just to sit somewhere and to eat hummus and to talk about peace. Yeah, we decide to do something. Ahmed said, what do you think about to bring Israelis to Palestine? Our Israeli friend welcomed this idea and we start to do it. We did it. We bring the first group to Jericho. They was afraid in the beginning when they saw how the people host them. They feel very happy and very safe. And we bring more and more and more people to let them see these Palestinians from the humanity face, not as they think Palestinians is all terrorists. And to let Palestinians in the same time see the Jewish in the humanity face. To see these people whose 
now demonstrate in Belain against wall. We did, we did it, and I believe it's possible to happen. I believe peace is not far from us, and we, we can live together. We need peace, both of us. We need peace to have our freedom, and Jews need peace to be saved. And I think peace happened just between enemies, not between friends. And now, eventually, I want to show a small clip about our organization, Visits Palestine. באים לסיור של ויזיט פלסטיין, זה בעצם הסיור הראשון שלנו שהוא פתוח לקהל, אנחנו מאוד מתרגשים. Bring people who never thought they could come to the meet the Palestinians, feel safe. Even if they are Jews, I feel they are very close to us. They are our people. We need peace. So, peace without contact, there are no peace for you. Come so far. Get there if we get there. לקרב בין העמים שחיים פה זה דבר מבורך שיש עליו קונצנזוס כמעט מכל גווני הקשת הפוליטית בארץ. 